Mr. President, I rise today to talk about a, uh, a problem that each one of us, all 100 senators, and in any gathering that you go to in your state or around this country, uh, people are affected by drug, by drug abuse, whether it be legal or illegal. So in our personal families, immediate families, or extended families, we know somebody has affected their lives. So I urge today my colleagues to support a common sense amendment which I have introduced to the Every Child Achieves Act that addresses an epidemic that is devastating to my state and our country, and I know your state also, which is substance abuse. Communities across the country, including many in my beautiful state of West Virginia, are seeing an alarming rise in substance abuse and addiction to legal prescription drugs. These are drugs that you'll find basically in uh, the medicine cabinet at your home. West Virginia is number one in overdose deaths number one in overdose deaths due to drug abuse. We've seen over a 600% increase in the number of people dying since 1999. Nationally, 21.6 million Americans are battling substance dependence or abuse. But as most of you know, you can't truly understand substance abuse with just a list of facts and statistics. It's one that can only be understood by hearing stories of those impacted. When I was governor of the state of West Virginia, I traveled around the state and I have seen firsthand the effects that substance abuse can have. And we try to tackle many of these issues at the state level, but it's impossible. All of us have to be in this. But one of the most moving experiences occurred during my first trip back to the mountain state after becoming a United States Senator. I traveled to the really beautiful little town of Oceana, West Virginia. I went to Oceana Middle School where I'd expected to talk about the importance of receiving a good education and working hard to gain the necessary skills to be successful in the workforce. <clears throat> Instead, I heard personal stories from 11-year-olds who spoke candidly about the ways that drugs were tearing apart their families, their homes, and their community. As tears trickled down their faces, they shared how they rarely played outside because too many needles coated the streets and drug deals often took place right in front of them. It is one thing to hear about overdoses and addictions from doctors, medical experts, or police officers who deal with substance abuse cases every day. But I can tell you it's another thing to sit across from an 11-year-old girl who is fighting through tears to describe how her family and her family life has been destroyed. Her father was hurt in the coal mines, rapidly became addicted to painkillers, causing her family to lose everything. As I listened to her story, I couldn't help but think that this young girl had to grow up so fast, so very fast, and miss some of the pleasures of childhood. Uh, that is why I'm doing everything in my power to fight this national problem. Uh, my common sense bipartisan amendment with Senator Ayotte would simply require that in states where this is a significant problem, the state education plan to include a strategy for how the state will help local education agencies educate students who face substance abuse in their home. What we're saying is no child can be in a drug-affected home and have a normal childhood. They can't have a normal learning experience in the, in, in the school system. And to be clear, it does not prescribe or require any particular response. We're not saying you have to do this. The states that wish to have this done can. It simply gives the states the flexibility to craft proposals that meet particular local needs. That means if you have a child that basically needs extracurricular activity, extra help, extra support, preschool, after school, they're able to intervene and change the system that would meet the needs of that community. Substance abuse by parents and other caregivers can, give, uh, can have a significant negative impact on the well-being of children and it makes it more difficult for them to learn and thrive in school as we know. This amendment is a small step forward toward addressing that problem, but it will encourage the states to consider solutions that will enable local schools and communities to better help these vulnerable children and ensure that every child is ready to learn. Our country, our states, our communities, our schools, and our children need us to take action to protect them from the devastation of substance abuse. I'm often reminded of the five promises, the five promises that we as adults should make to every child. Colin, Colin Powell started this, the five promises. And um, my wife and I have adopted it when I was governor, and we still have a foundation. First promise is every child has to have a loving, caring adult in their life. A loving, caring adult. 
uh, unconditional love. Second, every child should have a safe place. Every child should have a healthy start in life. Uh, every child should learn to have an education, to have a skill set. The fifth promise is what we can't teach. You can usually show from example, every child should grow to be a loving, caring adult and give something back. If we don't give the children the chance to have that type of, that type of uh, an experience, and they know they don't have a loving, caring adult, they don't have a safe place, and the home is not, because the home has been ruined because of drug abuse. Uh, this is where we need to step in. If we're going to save a generation, this is where we do it. This is the front line of defense today. So number one thing that's killing our country is drug abuse. And it's basically coming from prescription drugs. It starts with manufacturing. It goes down with the FDA, putting all these lethal drugs on the market that we never had before. It goes down to distribution, dispensing by doctors. And then we don't have any treatment centers to cure people once they get them. So I'm asking all of you, please consider supporting this amendment. It's the most reasonable, most responsible. It's not mandatory. It's optional. You can fit the needs and tailor this to fit however the needs of your community or your state or your county might need. With that, I yield the floor, Mr. President.